All right. Well, we're coming to uh, a project I've been kind of thinking about for a little while now. A uh, nice, old, decrepit tree, kind of hollowed out on top with a really cool portal in the center. So I'm going to sketch this out real quick here, and we'll see what I can come up with. I really don't have much of a plan other than that. I'm thinking maybe we'll probably need uh, one tea light, most likely from the dollar store. Those usually work. I'm going to switch out my LED, but I mean, I don't think you'd have to. I think it would still look cool with the flickering uh, orange in the background. But I think it's going to look maybe something like this. We'll call it the tree portal. And maybe with lights. All right, let's get her done. All right, first I'm going to grab a big piece of uh, XPS foam that I found at my job site. I cut off a nice little rectangular chunk. You guys, uh, I don't know if you have anything this big. If you don't, maybe you might have to glue a couple of pieces together. I went about two and a half by about four inches, maybe a little bit better. And then I just start whittling down the sides, trying to uh, create that picture in my mind. And take your time. You don't want to take off too much. You know, yeah, you can always add it back on, but I mean, that would be a gluey mess and more of a pain in the ass than anything else. But if you just whittle down the sides a little bit, kind of like concave on the side so it flares out at the top, kind of like a, a caricature of a old, decrepit uh, tree. I think it's going to look real cool, man. So uh, here I am just continuing on. I'm going to hollow out the top a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit. You know, you don't want the light coming out the top. Well, maybe you do. Maybe you want to go all the way through. I cut a little cone right there, and then I just whittle down the sides nice and easy, making sure that you're leaving yourself a little bit of room to, uh, you know, still take off some more material and work it out. And here I am. I'm just going to take off some of those hard edges that are still existing. I'm not going to take them all off. I mean, I think it's still going to look pretty cool. But, uh, yeah. And then decide which side you kind of want the, the portal door to be on. This is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to throw it on this side. And grab my knife there and just cut it out all nice and neat, going in about half an inch all the way around. And then I come in on a bit of a wicked angle, and I'm just going to try and get that door out of there. Once that's out of there, make sure you keep that to the side. And then we just continue to hollow it out. I took my knife, and I went pretty deep in there, and then grab my dentist tool and I just start picking away and making a bloody mess all over the place. Kind of looks like we have confetti all over the floor by the end of the day. There you go and whittle it out. It doesn't matter what it looks like on the inside, man. Um, in the end, no one's going to see it. It's going to be dark and there'll be a light kind of flaring and you'll have a portal on the front. And we'll uh, Maybe we'll uh, do a couple of branches off to the side. I grab two pieces of scrap and kind of just cone cut them out. The first one I glued on right away and then I second thought about it and once I cut this second cone here and kind of cut the angle to the to the side of the tree that I want to make sure it fits, um, why don't you grab yourself a skewer? We'll cut about an inch off of that and make sure that both ends are, are kind of uh, spear-like so that it'll go in easy. And then with the hot glue, man, that shit, it's going to be super solid. And I realized I'd made a mistake, so I pulled off that left one and I, I did the skewer job on it as well. There we go, nice. And then we just start blending it in. Kind of making it look like it fits. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, we're going to work on that. But just get her close. Now, when you guys do wood grain on, uh, on any of your other crafts, you always do those exaggerated lines. We're going to do that here from top to bottom, all the way down. And I'm using my dentist tool. As you can see, it's tearing it up a little bit, but that's perfect, man. With the bark that I'm thinking on uh, and the trees that I'm thinking of, it always kind of looks like uh, that they're cracking out of their shell. So we're going to try and mimic that. So I glued a piece on the side, nice piece of big scrap there for a root. Added a triangular base on the front there. We're going to add that and make it look like kind of like a root system as well. But that's also going to be where your door is going to sit. And we're going to add a little bit to the front of that door so it sits a little bit more L-like and a little bit more stable. And then we'll probably throw a magnet in there just so you can take it on and take it off nice and easy. I'm continuing to blend this out nice and easy, making sure you get all the lines in there, man. Just take your time, you know, visualize it. This is going to be uh, your artist uh, at work, you know what I mean? Like, just envision slowly how you think it's going to look. Make sure you keep at least a quarter inch in between the lines, because if they get too close, you're just going to tear them completely off, and you're going to have big chunks hanging out. 
But if you do it right, just kind of like I'm doing here, all the way down the roots, we'll do it up the side of the branches, and just dig it out. I was actually really surprised how well this really worked out. You can see it kind of looks a little messed up right now, but don't worry. We're going to take a lighter to this, and I'm going to show you a little technique. It's going to look really cool. Let's continue to work that out nice and easy, you know, and it's to your liking. This is uh, your choice, man. However you think it's going to look cool, just do it. Don't, don't take any, don't, don't even worry about taking the chances, but make sure that when you get at the top there, you kind of want to dig it out a little bit more so that there's a little bit of uh, a, a visual right through. So it looks old and decrepit and kind of like it's coming apart and, and, and disintegrating slowly through time. All right, so this is what we got so far. It's starting to look pretty good. I'm going to take a knife there, and with those lines that we've dragged all the way from the top to the bottom, I'm just going to cut little wedges out just to really define it and exaggerate it a little bit, make it pop, make it stand out, and maybe to break down some of that squareness that we're working with on top because, you know, you don't want it to look like a square chunk. You kind of want to look at, make it look a little bit more uh, organic than that. And I continue to make sure that this door always fits. And you got to make sure that you do the lines down the front of the door as well. Now, you can try and get them to line up with the ones that you're pulling down the front face. But uh, it might be a little bit of a pain in the ass. I just did them randomly on their, on their own. They're still going to look really cool. Now, here's my te technique today. We're going to use the foil ball. Now, I, knew, I know you usually use that for uh, stone work and stuff. But you know as well as I do, we've all seen people using um, bark to represent stone. And by the time you paint it up, man, does that ever look cool. Well, you know, it kind of works both ways. And I'm just going to add a bunch of texture. And just like any other craft that you guys do, it's all about the texture. It's about the layers. It's about the texture. It's just about adding little details and things that pop out. And people are going to be wowed no matter what. So roll this all over the place. Take your time. Try not to break it. I know we've got it half-assed together now. And it's kind of a little, it's a little unstable, but it's good. I think it's, uh, it's really holding up pretty good. Make sure you get everything. And if you feel like you're not getting enough texture out of your uh, aluminum ball, maybe it's time to go get a new one. Because after a while, after you've used these ones for a while, they, uh, they tend to kind of round out and you lose a bit of that texture you were looking for. Nice. This thing is uh, it's really starting to work out, I think. And then I accidentally busted in a little bit of the side of the door there. Because it's, uh, I hollowed out just in behind a little bit so that it gave a little bit of a ledge kind of coming out to the door. So it looks like it actually goes in on the left and on the right. And just grab a little bit of hot glue there. You can probably get that to stand back up. Unfortunately, later on, if you guys are really quick and notice that I, it ended up breaking off again and I never did refill it. But it still looked really cool in the long run. All right, we'll just get your fingers in there, and I just set it back up. Nice. A couple of little loose spots. Nothing's going to hurt, though, man. I must have, uh, must have broke this a little bit while I was rolling it with the ball. And this is what we're working with so far. I think it's really starting to take shape. It's starting to look really cool. All right, now coming up with a plan here. Like I said, I was working with nothing at the time, so you're just kind of working it out in my mind, making sure I don't overdo something and making sure that I don't take off something that needs to be there. We're going to put a little bit of cardboard underneath this. Almost all my terrain ends up with a cardboard uh, base. I'm using just, a, I think it's a cracker box. I've got tons of them kicking around. Make sure your hot glue is ready to go. Depending on how hot your uh, hot glue is, it might actually melt this. Now, underneath, it's not going to be a big deal. People aren't going to see it. 
But if you were doing it on top there, you, you want to make sure that you just take your time and be careful. You don't want to melt the styrofoam, especially with those vapors. Make sure you're in a well-ventilated well area. I got some fans going, got a respirator, got something. But protect yourself, guys. I'm going to just run that hot glue all over the place. Hold her down nice and neat. Once she's stuck, you're good. And then what I'm going to end up doing is cutting out a, a random pattern around it. So it fits in with my terrain. I found a couple of real twigs from outside. I cut a couple of two-inch pieces. I'm going to jam that right in the end of those branches that we created. It's really going to add to this, and I think it's going to be really cool, man. I ended up breaking the side a little bit, but you're not going to notice that. And then just take a bit of time and just whittle it in there and make sure it's kind of blended and it looks like it fits. In the end, this could just be uh, a part of the tree that all of the bark has been pulled back right down to the core. Either way, it's cool. All right, we're still looking over this, kind of making a plan. Here's the door. I did inscribe a little rune on the front. I thought it was kind of cool, but unfortunately it really didn't show up in the long run. But with that triangular place in the front there, I told you I wanted to cut that in on, on purpose, make sure that we have a nice flat surface to work with. And I grabbed a piece of scrap. We're just going to glue that right on the front of the door. Now don't glue it on the bottom part. You're going to want to be able to get off of that. And we're going to put magnets in there so the door stays. But just kind of section it in there and make sure that the door is sitting there when you glue it on so that it sits in the right spot and you don't have any gaps. And now you got a handhold too as well. You can pull that off later. It'll be easier. And using my tool, you can use a, a pen or a knife. It doesn't really matter. I just find the center and I start digging around in the middle there, just trying to open it up, see what I got to work with. And then I just start picking away. All right, here's that tea light I was talking about. We want to make sure that fits. So we draw a little circle around that, make sure we got the right uh, diameter. We'll just cut that out. And bam, we'll just continue to hollow out that bottom part. Once we get it to that point, we got some mirrors, or sorry, some uh, huh, magnets. We're going to use those magnets to hold this door in place. So I'm just kind of looking at where I can find the centerpiece of that, making sure that everything's covered. I don't want to see the magnets. Once I got my idea where it was going to be, I just dug out a little circle. doesn't matter which way the poles are facing right now. We just get that first one in, glue it down. And then I go over top of it with a little bit of hot glue and flatten it out with my finger just to make sure she stays. Now... I'm going to do the same thing on the door. And make sure you figure it out. Make sure that glue is dry before you try this. You're going to make a mess. Figure out where you think that magnet's sitting. And we'll just start digging away at the bottom of the door and see if we can't set one up in there. And double check your magnets. Make sure you got the right poles facing down. You want this thing uh, the opposite. It's so light, it's just going to throw it right off. And get that in there. Same thing. Glue it down. Get a little bit of hot glue over top of it. Make sure she's in there. All right, take that lighter. We're going to go from bottom to top, bottom to top. Make sure you're in a well-ventilated area and protect yourself. You wait and see what kind of grain you get from this. Nice and easy. It's going to melt that styrofoam just a little bit, give it a bit of a hard shell. And now this is my PVA water mixture with a little bit of paint just so I can see where I've got it. I like mine kind of watery, about a 60 to 40%, 60% water. We just get that all over the place. And because we're working with glue, you might as well do your stone flocking now. So I've been grabbing, I grabbed some cat litter. I didn't have anything finer and just started throwing it on there and making sure she was ready to go for when I did the paint job. All right, we got that tea light. Let's peel this thing open. Get out a little screwdriver. Mine's got a little screw on it. Get that out of there. Then we'll just peel that bottom off and we'll get that magnet out of the way. Now these, on, on the ones that I've got at my dollar store in Canada, they're pretty simple. Nothing's glued or soldered down. It's just got a little bend job. So I'm going to replace it with these LEDs I bought on Amazon. You don't have to, though. 
Just make sure you got the right poles, make sure you got it facing the right way. And then I'm just gonna mimic the bend from the original LED so that it fits just like it used to. And get my little um, on off switch button back on there. That's what pushes it over to the side of the battery and turns it on. Test it a couple of times, make sure it's ready. You don't want to have to peel this thing apart like I'm about to after I get it back together. You kind of want to get it done right the first time. Of course, unfortunately, the dollar store ones I have, the little uh, the little switch is kind of flimsy, so I didn't have it in the right spot when I originally put this on, as you can see. Bam, you got a green light. That's awesome. All right, now grab some parchment paper. We're gonna do the portal now. A Little bit of hot glue, we're gonna do some swirls. Kind of thin, make sure that it doesn't just goop together. You're just gonna end up one, one big solid piece of hot glue, which isn't gonna look cool at all. And once it dries, we'll just peel it right off of there, and that's what you got. I did have a little bit of Milliput kicking around. I've had for a while, I don't use it very often. But uh, we're gonna give it a shot on this one. Let's cut off two equal amounts. I'm gonna roll and mix it together. And what we're going to do here is we're going to create little, uh, those uh, big fungus that look like uh, dinner plates hanging off the side of those trees that have been there forever. We're going to mimic that. Now, if you don't have Milliput, you can totally do this with styrofoam. I'm totally confident that you could. We just cut little half circles and kind of, it would just be a little harder because you'd have to get it right the first time. But with the Milliput here, you can see me, I'm just kind of pushing it in there, getting it into the crevices, making sure it's going to hold and making sure it looks organic and like it means like it's, it's part of the tree. It's been there forever, obviously, if it's this big. So it's really going to be incorporated with the side of the bark. And just take your time. And if you do have Milliput, a little bit of water on top, you guys probably know that already. We'll smooth those surfaces right out if you need to. You can even put a little water on your uh, tool and it'll probably smooth it out just as well. What I decided here is just beside the door, I'm going to go up with uh, maybe four pieces of fungus take away from the idea of the crack of the side of the door there so that you don't see it right away. All you see is the fungus. And just keep working that in there until you're happy with this. Remember the guys, this is your crafting. You're not making my tree. You're making your tree. So do what you want. We got the door on the front here. I'm going to probably put two on there to make sure it blends in with the rest of the tree. I was able to do it while the door was sitting on there, but just be careful. Most likely because you've hollowed it out on the backside, the door is going to push through. And then you might damage it. So you might have to take the door off to do it. I just got lucky. I had a little bit of Milliput left over. I was thinking, yeah, you know what? Maybe uh, like Bob Ross style. We had a little, uh, little open area. I'm going to put a little piece of Fungus on the left hand side. And of course, you know, you can't leave him alone. We're going to give him a friend. He's going to have two on that side. Just work that into the cracks nice and easy. All right, she's starting to come along. Door still comes off. We got some glitter from the dollar store. We're going to have some fun. And I mean fun by, you're going to be finding glitter for the next bloody month. But anyways, so what I did is I took the end of the hot gun, or hot glue gun, and just started jamming it into the hot glue um, portal that we've created. What's going to happen is it'll make it all tacky again, and this glitter is going to stick like a champ. And I just randomly throw it on there. It doesn't have to be a pattern, or maybe you want a pattern. If you want a pattern, make a pattern, man. It's whatever you want. Nice. All right, I did have some kind of glowish in the dark paint. You could use any kind of glow in the dark uh, green or whatever color you choose. I just kind of slathered it on there and, and uh, was hoping that it was going to work out. And actually, it ended up looking really nice. And just because I'm using green doesn't mean you guys have to. I was just thinking to go along with the, you know, the forest setting. Going back in on that fungus now, I grabbed my um, dentist tool. You could probably use a toothpick just as easy. And I'm just creating those little ridges underneath uh, most fungus that you see. Like you look at the bottom of a mushroom and you see all those little fins, those little segments. That's what we're doing. We're going to create that by hand. doesn't have to be perfect. You know, 
just getting a few of them in there is going to break up the monotony of what you've created and it's going to look cool and I took everything outside including the tea light covering the light before I did this and I splat black spray bombed everything and now I'm working with a little bit of uh, burnt umber with just a dash of uh, spun gold we're gonna go for a 90% coverage and then when you're done that we we'll switch over to the cinnamon I use a little bit of white with that spun gold again and coming down from the top always top to bottom I'm imagining some sort of light source above it so that it'll mix in with the rest of my terrain and don't worry if it looks too light I mean uh, you're gonna see when I hit it with the white it's gonna get light but once you start hitting this thing up with dark washes it's gonna tone it right down and don't forget to do the door All right, I made a medium gray, and because you know a lot of old wood has some gray in it, I'm just gonna throw on a little bit of gray here and there randomly, just giving it a little bit more depth and character. Nice. Well, one of those dollar store makeup brushes work like a champ. Get a little bit of white on there, and I'm just going from top to bottom again, top to bottom. And I did go a little lighter than I thought I was going to, but you know what, man, it all turned out in the end, and it did end up looking cool, like I said. Don't forget the door, and we're going to hit this thing up with washes anyways. You know, go grab yourself a color you like. I went with red and a little bit of white for underneath the fungus. So I hit up the bottom of the fungus with any kind of color or white you kind of want. And then whatever color you want on top. Now, like I said, I went with red. But, I mean, fantasy is great, man. You can have... Uh, Blue, purple, green, doesn't matter. Or you can make it look real deal like uh, like a light reddish brown. And I just went over top of all of the fungus that we created now that it's all nice and sealed up and hard. Just take your time. You can see that it's already adding to the features. Don't forget to do the door. And afterwards, I'm not going to show it, but I did little white dots on top just to give it some more character. And there it is. Look at that. Looking good. All right, flock time. Get out some watered down PVA glue. Start jamming it all over where you want it. I'm going all over the base and a little bit up under the tree. My flock is made out of sawdust mostly with three different colored greens. I've got uh, uh, light and a dark brown. And I also added some uh, parsley and uh, oregano from the dollar store. And it really does give it some good character. And the place ends up smelling like pizza. Don't forget to do the top. You know, after all these years, it's been sitting there. You know, it's going to collect debris, so obviously there's going to be something in there. And I went outside and uh, found a few pieces of moss and stuff in my area. You guys can buy this at the dollar store in random bags. It doesn't really matter what kind. I don't remember the names of the ones I'm using right now. But I just uh, grabbed a couple that I thought were interesting, and I'm just going to start gluing them on there in random spots, especially on top of the uh, broken branches that have been there forever. I'm going to pull out some of those Army Painter uh, grass tufts. I mean, you don't have to do this. I think this thing looked cool anyways, but I've got them around, and I've got to justify to my wife why I continue to buy these things. I chose a nice little dark green to start, kind of like a forest green, and then I went with some of those uh, burnt-looking ones where they got like a dark gray with a brown end, and I just randomly jammed them on there. And then I got this really cool alien colored grass tufts, these really light blue ones. And my wife loves blue, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to stick one of those on there just for character. There's your portal. All right, let's start jamming it up there. A good thing about it being glue is it's flexible, so you can get it in there. But don't be too crazy with it, because you will tear it apart. I kind of got it halfway in there and realized it was a little too big. So good thing about glue, you just trim it down, restuff it in there. And remember, you're just pushing it to the front face where your door is. Get your fingers in there and just jam it in. Come up from behind, hit it up with a little bit of hot glue, tack it down at least. Look at that, tea light still works like a champ. I use my tool here, you could probably use a pen or even your uh, tweezers and just kind of pull that portal out a little bit so it sits nice. I did end up going up back in there with a little bit of hot glue on the front side, but I'm going to cover it up later. We've got some homemade noolin oil, some brown wash, and a green wash I like to use for my algae and... and broken down uh, green stuff so we're going to go over it with a brown wash first i'm going to leave you guys a link in the bottom there for luke apps his uh his channel is amazing man and he showed me how to make noolin oil at home so it's pretty simple and i think you should do it too man it really adds to all your terrain 
And I mean, you end up using so much of it for $10, a little pot of the Citadel stuff, which is amazing. It's totally not worth it for as much as I like to use this. So get it all over the place. Get it in the cracks, really slosh it on there, and don't forget to do the door. And with the green, it's just going to look like uh, algae and moss, right? So I just kind of got it all over the place, and bam, there we are, man. Let her dry, hit her up with a clear coat, and there you go. Middle of the ruins is just sitting there. Door sits nice. Portal appears out of nowhere with the green light in the background. Even an orange would be really cool, man. Look at that texture. When you hit that up with that lighter, man, it really left some really decent texture. That looks like bark to me. I don't know. What do you think? And there's that little piece of broken off you can see, but it doesn't really matter. It all blends in. I'm super stoked with the way this turned out. I'm really glad you guys were here with me today. If you like what I do here, why don't you like and subscribe and maybe even leave me a comment. No one seems to be leaving comments for me yet. I know I'm kind of new at this and unfortunately I'm not super organized, but uh, I'll do what I can and share what knowledge I do have. So thanks for taking it out, man, and I hope to see you guys again.